tech, which I'd love to know. Conversation with you and the audiences. Great. So uh, thank you to everybody who's joined us. We're going to be talking about marrying tech and content. And the session is called Using Technology to Create High Quality Content. So Tarun, should we just dive right in? Perfect. Let's go. All right. Okay, Tarun, um, content has been a colossal part of your professional journey. You've literally seen the shift from analog content creation to the real digital content creation, from big cameras to mobile phones in our hands. But being on the corporate side, um, you would have to have, you know, you'd, you'd have to make certain decisions, um, you know, keep catching up with the trends, deciding which technology to invest in now for the future. So I want to start this discussion by asking you one simple question. What are the top highlights in technological developments that you've seen in the last 20 years of your journey that you think have really changed the course of content creation and consumption? So... <clears throat> Obviously, the biggest trend uh, that has come about over the last, more so in the last five, uh, but eventually in the last 10 years has been video on demand, right? right. Uh, and what video on demand starting from the uh, advent of YouTube uh, to getting to the OTT platforms to now getting to short video um, and now eventually doing more and more. Start to wanting to learn education in digital transformation or doing, you know, web series, stroke, doing short videos. Uh, almost everything at one level is video. At the other level is democratized. And, yeah. uh, you know, we started from repurposing curated content. Even when YouTube started, they were repurposing content from broadcasters, from libraries and so on and so forth then started to actually getting UGC, what we call the earlier version of UGC 1, where the content was produced using professional tools, was but was purposed on open platforms. So it wasn't broadcast content, but it was content made by variety of content creators, but it was all made with professional tools. In UGC 2, which is today, uh, yeah. The big difference is that the content is now no more created using professional tools. Um, it's now created and truly democratized by anybody who has a creative idea and thought. And the more professional tools, editing tools, AR, VR tools, and all of them have been now very simplified and democratized for every single user to use. Whether it's for a functional need, whether it's for and whether it's to build a personal brand, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. Any amount of video content that's getting created today doesn't need to be created through professional un understanding, doesn't have to have, you know, uh, professional cameramen, editors, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And if you have a great idea, if you if you can, you know, write out a great script, uh, or collaborate with somebody in writing out something that you want to do. There are very many ways of getting that content out there. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Darren, you spoke about democratizing content. And, you know, um, I want to understand from you, when you democratize content at scale through technology and something that we've seen, you know, the biggest technology startups do in the world today. Um, I have two questions. First is, how do you keep the quality and safety of content um, and second, do you think the oh, because they have so many avenues to see 
when it comes to quality na really it's like beauty hmm. it lies on the eyes of the beholder right it's an old sentence so quality gets defined by how relevant the content is for the people who are choosing to consume it if you follow a key opinion leader or an influencer who makes videos on their own phone and post but make a lot of sense but may not have perfect lighting uh, perfect video editing and so on and so forth and perfect audio and background music but uh, tell me will you consume it or not i have i have always right? you yeah. all we all continue to consume things which are meaningful which are relevant uh, which make sense to us uh, without having to look at what we think of aesthetics in video editing aesthetics in lighting aesthetics yeah. in audio work and so on and so forth so i think the context the the messaging the content is now not defined by you know old values of what quality meant it really is about relevance eventually right it's about how much sense you really make uh, with what you're doing what you're putting out there so that really addresses the quality piece right but and there will be premium con- uh, content where people will continue to invest in better quality better quality equipment better quality v- sf the vfx so on and so forth and so you know things will go in in parallel right there will be the great user generated or the great great influencer or the great uh, you know self made content and then there will be the more premium curated content that will use better and better post production facilities great greater uh, visual effects and so on so then everything will survive and it will you know it will mean to people differently in different times of their life so that's mm-hmm. one now mm-hmm. coming down to safety now uh, and i'm assuming your meaning safety as in user safety and with the data privacy that 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 you know we see and and i mean i'm i'm i live here in europe now and it's a big big challenge to give you the simplest ex- so you know uh, obviously everybody is trying very hard to do to different things of data safety data safety and data, data security most companies are now gdpr compliant and, mm-hmm. and i think rightly so uh, at one level uh, we are all also looking at what's happening with ccpa and making sure that you know we are uh, we are compliant on to what kids should see and and what kids shouldn't see most platforms have built barriers on onboarding uh, so that we they don't make sure that they don't expose um i've been part of uh, the indian imei wherein we've built out a code of conduct uh, for at least premium and curated content to make sure that uh, you know age gating age rating is done properly um, on premium content similarly um, you know uh, ugc ai led moderation as well as modern manual moderation i do think that big tech needs to increasingly think about what their recommendation engines are doing and there is uh, i mean i don't need to add fuel to fire but there is enough conversation now instagram and facebook should be looking at not propagating the rabbit hole phenomena on their recommendation engines and i think that's where technology is possibly going wrong in doing justice to content hmm Now I have a very naive question. When you're looking at so much content, do you ever have FOMO? Like, you know, the fear of missing out on this content, and especially when you're building out such big libraries. Do you do you ever have FOMO? See, you know, I'm very precious with my time. So in okay. fact, I'm at the reverse. If I start to watch something that I think doesn't deserve my time, I oh. don't go beyond the first 20, 30, 40 minutes of the entire series, right? Uh, and i'm kind of very clear about that so i never have fomo in in the words i am very critical about content mine uh, and everybody else's and uh, you know i'm kind of uh, the most ideal critical consumer you can get who will not waste their time on stuff yeah all right that that's that's very great to know i mean we we all that way very mindful of you know now what we watch and it's always i think we're moving towards just mindless consumption to value driven consumption um and which actually brings me to my next question so um tell us a young entrepreneur have realized that yes content is the king but you need communities to make an empire 
and i want to steer this conversation towards community the community of creators the community of people who consume this content as well as the community that supports the building of this content library you know with people like you and the organizations that you worked with so how do you keep the community alive and engaged and active when the content itself is constantly changing and every day there are new trends so how do you uh, maintain a community when content is constantly changing you are talking about community of creators or are you talking about community of users um you know communities of users get created behind one they get created around um, content themes so i love uh, say comedy shows and i've now become a part of people who come and discuss comedy shows on reddit um and we discuss you know what are the kind of characters we love what are the kind of humor we love and so on and so forth so that's one thing and I, and com communities actually are self fulfilling forums where uh, you know as new and new content comes in uh, the guys in the communities actually enrich conversations as they go along right so that's mm -hmm. that's one part of the community the other part of the community that gets created is for a specific brand of shows mm -hmm. right like uh, if i am a house of cards fan then i will join a house of cards forum and i will have a lot of conversations around house of cards with the kind of people who also like house of cards right and we our our unifying factor is our love or hate for house of cards its characters its themes its anticipation of what the next season be better what is wrong where the character is going to go my entire conversations around that one subject the yeah. third uh, community is largely around key influencers uh, whether they are actors in shows or whether they are uh, content creators on social platforms themselves uh, and their life becomes tough because to be able to keep your uh, user base engaged uh, yeah. you got to be staying with the times right and are you doing stuff that that is cutting edge you are doing stuff that is novel um, you know i have creator friends who started with building characters uh, you know, of themselves say 10 years ago right yeah. and they they lasted for 3 years and then they kept doing more of the same but that more of the same does not work right you've got to there the level of evolution the kind of content your uh, your ability to connect with the real world and what's happening um in other societal trends and bring that into your conversations is very very critical it's almost like you've got to be fast social like yeah. fast commerce like she in is fast fashion you got to be fast content right and the day and age of fast content is here especially around the third bucket of influencers and so on and so for the keen of cube in leaders hmm hmm yeah i think um, well not to propagate sheen here because uh, there is no fast fashion that we're talking and promoting here uh Tarun, i want to also talk to you about you know the course the digital transformation course that you're doing with mica it's called results and outcomes right yes yeah so uh, and i've and i've you know often heard you say uh, in some of the podcasts that i was consuming where you were talking that um the the content marketers constantly have to upskill themselves to stay relevant of these trends and especially you know the the increasingly automated world that we are moving so how do you think content marketers can upsell uh, upskill themselves i think uh, the content marketers uh, key jobs or key challenges or key jobs to be done is to be able to keep up with the creator economy that's coming about right mm -hmm. uh, how do you leverage the creator economy how do you leverage tools in the creator economy uh, to be able to use content to build to and and you spoke about data privacy so i think you know at one level people used to own communities and think or they thought they own communities on social platforms like youtube or instagram or facebook but you don't really own those communities because you can't send those communities any emails you can't send them any sms you can't interact with them engage with them at an equal to one level you can't mm -hmm. really uh, send them notifications you can't uh, steer them towards commerce Uh, you don't have any first party data to them 
Um, so, you know, most people are now uh, moving their community game to proprietary community tools like Mighty Networks, like uh, Tribe, like uh, Vibly, like Circle. And, um, you know, content marketers have to understand that are we, uh, are, if they're going to build a community on the back of their content, then are they going to build that on open social platforms or are they going to do it in a combination of open social platforms and Build a more intimate and engaged relationship with your users. Um, how do you then look at fan interactions and do you use that for uh, advocacy? Do you do that for monetization? How do you uh, look at blockchain and how do you uh, deploy that into content? And how do you encourage you know, content creation and content distribution and deployment using uh, private and public blockchain and, and currency. So the, the whole game has changed completely from getting two uh, influencers to, you know, punch in some of your their content into branded posts, which is mm -hmm. all right blogs um, on some platforms, which is what the, the mix of content marketing used to be. Hmm, 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 hmm. And, you know, this is the same gap that we've also identified, you know, with, with the audio platform now that I'm working. So I can definitely see similarities because we're always looking for great stories to tell through audio and, you know, build these immersive audio experiences. Um, Tarun, I want to talk about the problem that you're solving um, with Serendipity Media. You, you want to give us everybody, a, you know, a little introduction on what is Serendipity Media Tech? So what we're looking to build, or we have, what we've built and we're going to go to market with is really uh, enriching the life of the writers. We do believe that writers uh, have it most tough and we're building a storyboard for writers which allows writers to be able to get inspired by true life incidents in any genre um, through uh, a bot which actually can give you uh, concise storylines, timelines, characters, uh, mix and match ideas across themes for you uh, to write on our platform using very good quality inspiration. Once yeah. you've been able to write something good on our platform, we've built a workflow that allows you to get a score on our platform, which is a combination of, of AI, uh, real you to be able to reach out to uh, both platforms as well as uh, uh, platforms as well as producers to be able uh, to finally convert your story into something tangible and even publishers to be able to convert your stories into something tangible and monetize them. Uh, we also allow platforms and producers to use the platform to be able to test their own yeah. stories. Uh, before they go and commit huge amount of money in mm -hmm. uh, producing some of that content. So if you've got a great script, come and test your script on our platform. We'll be able to tell you what the bot says about your story. We'll be able to tell you what mm -hmm. critics and the community says. We'll be able to give you a serendipity score, which will give you a level of confidence on whether mm -hmm. you should go ahead and inv invest behind this content longer or not. That's that's wonderful. You know, I... I... I, I love what you've written on your website. We find the story and you do the storytelling. I that we see on the internet both on the open source as well as, as well as on social sources and we are connecting the dots uh, so the crawler has been crawlers and the cleaning mechanism has been working for the last one year uh in sifting through all of this information and bringing it to light yeah that's that's wonderful and how do you think these advancements in AI, where you know AI can generate storylines, can figure out your serendipity score. How do you think it'll affect the scale at which we're able to produce content today, and generally how it'll affect the modern day media industry? So writing is the key to any kind of content you create, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're writing a blog, whether you, whether you're uh, making a podcast, whether you're doing uh, short series, long series, anything, right? 
so if we can democratize writing uh, we can inspire writers we can filter through and un- and help them write better uh, we can give people a level of confidence on the quality of the output uh, mm. then a lot more many people will come into the fun right today mm. if you want to be part of say uh, you know quality web series or movie content as a writer you've got to have a huge amount of legacy right and you've got to have the right kind of connection so your ability to get to the last mile is very very constricted uh, mm. this allows for both the supply side and the demand side to have far mm. more amount of volume available for them hmm hmm I think uh, you know even our friends at Pepper Content have created a great product where they're using AI uh, to create content. I know. And, I told me about it, and I'm quite happy on what he's doing. Yeah. Yes, and GPT three is still a new trend. I'm honestly learning about it as we speak. Um, but how do you stay ahead of the content market, and how have you kept yourself abreast of the trends in media content and the overall digital entertainment? at uh, forward looking trends uh, new things in the creator economy new things in the ai spectrum thinking of product use cases thinking of uh, real life problems to solve so that you know there's a got to be a balance between operating and thinking mm. absolutely i think uh, you know the pandemic compressed all these years of di- digital change into just a few short months and it's it's very exciting times that we're living in i think the key is continuing to experiment and innovate and as you said you know reengineering yourself um, because you know you you are the people who know the core business and as as you say that it's it's always great to upskill and always you know learn and be ahead of the curve um that actually brings me to again a life question For answering this, this was one of the most boiling questions that we had. I think and- I think the question should be what kind of content will be relevant in the next four five years, right? Because let's, TV is yeah, just a TV, of the, TV is just a uh, it's just a, a a delivery mechanism, right? The the screen. the tv screen will always be relevant right whether it's powered by a dongle at the back and broadband at the back or whether it's powered by um you know cable at the back it'll always be relevant you want to watch stuff on, on the big screen now mm-hmm. i think when what you mean by tv is what kind of content and will the kind of content that tv channels today uh, deliver will that be relevant i think that will continue to be relevant or irrelevant as long as there are audiences willing to watch them today right tv screens uh, will always be relevant the kind if the content is good the content will be relevant the mechanism of delivery it will change right uh, that truly will become video on demand if you bring something more convenient into life then people don't go back to the old right hmm 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 and yeah, and, because- and the and the basic proliferation of broadband and um, smart tvs and the prices of accessing this uh, convenience is become so uh, cheap and affordable that uh, it's now somebody's if somebody's taken a step forward into that uh, convenient kind of video consumption they are unlikely to take a step back yeah i mean i don't have a cable connection here at at my place yeah. and, and, of- and you don't have a cable connection uh, because of two reasons one um because you think that it's convenient to watch video on demand two um and that that's the question you're asking is whether you relate to the kind of content that cable tv provides to you but that content today is also available on those respective um, broadcasters ott platform then people continue to consume them if not on t- continue to have a cable connection or are you you know streaming content on the go uh, in fact if you have any other questions for tarun please uh, you know write in the chat box and i will take it up um so picking from the cable connection bit and you know because we've seen this rise in streaming um 
at one place which you spoke about that there's a lot of effort that goes into creating content um and we're constantly finding ways of integrating tech into our content and on the other hand we have this finger marathon where we are inching towards personalization from your experience in creating and building content for some of the largest content libraries what would you suggest to these small media houses who've now come up in the picture um so many small media houses Their houses and how can they do it as effectively as the larger ones do it? So I think the choice of creating content uh, lies in two or three things. One is obviously the business model and your level of uh, capability to invest. But let's keep that aside, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, it comes down to uh, what do you want to make, right? Do you want to make premium content? Do you want to make uh, UGC and I won't call it UGC, but PGC content, which is professionally generated content, but available uh, at your own terms on open platforms, right? Mm. Or do you want to make short, uh, short video content, right? You have the choice to making all three because stories can be told in all formats, right? You can choose to go and approach um, big OTT platforms and say, "Hey, I want to make a show for you, and please commission me." that will be able to give me a certain amount of ad recovery like YouTube or some of the others. And I can deploy, I can build a channel. I can like some of the short film platforms have done and I can deploy on that. Or you can say that, listen, I don't need such a long duration to tell stories I have. I want to start doing this on short formats like Insta Reels or like yeah. Josh or Moj or MX or whatever. And I, I'm happier telling my stories in this format rather than in the more premium curated format. So yeah. you have all of these three options available. Yeah. And and YouTube Shorts is like the latest one joining the right. bandwagon now. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, we have a question that says, apart from the current advanced technology like AR and VR, what do you think the next big thing in content creation in future will hold? This is by Vishnu. I think increasingly uh, what... Um, I think you have to look at owned monetization, owned uh, communities, and owned distribution mechanisms through blockchain. Mm. Um, and that will be your truth, right? I think uh, when blockchain currencies are getting traded at such high value, why are they getting traded at high value? Because we people do believe that eventually uh, in the real world, the virtual world or the virtual currency will be uh, capable of doing most things that you need to do. So you were paying people today to be able to go um, pay for CDNs and pay for promoting your content and so on and so forth, or even pay for consuming content. We People do believe that crypto and blockchain will play a big role in making some of parts uh, come alive in this game. And, and, you know, that is going to be the big revolution. So the creator Absolutely. and the content economy... And blockchain. Okay, so um, one question that I have for you is how do you find your inspiration? You know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I, I tend to look at people who are doing, you know, younger people, uh, older people who are doing far more uh, advanced work, cutting edge work, uh, things that are ahead of the curve. I'm always looking for inspiration for people who are willing to go against the tide or willing to go uh, ahead of the curve. Uh, and, and, you know, that's really my inspiration. You've got to be self-motivated. You can't expect people to come and tell you what you need to do, but uh, you've also got to always look to break the status quo. Yeah, very, very true. Um, I want to come back to your current endeavor um, um, that you're invested in. So what are some of the learnings, Tarun, if you can pinpoint, that you've had in building this community-based marketplace? 
um, where you're serving a fine niche of content discovery at scale. Here. I think the biggest learning is is about how do you really um, you know open the funnel to mm -hmm. the number of people that you work with. Um, mm -hmm. Like what Pepper is trying to do, really the world of writers is vast and and wide, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, uh, through the years, when we when we have we come up with a great idea, say hey, you know, we want to make this show on Naxals. Or hey, we want to make this show around, uh, you know, an inspira inspiration, into inspiring individual. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And we sit down in a room and say, okay, what should we do? And people throw up names of writers that they've all worked with, which is what is bound to happen, right? And uh, uh, and we look at those set of writers. Uh, we call some of them. Uh, we work with one of the four or five names that we get. Not to what does the users think about our stories? Um, what do, what does the world think about our stories? Have many other stories been done like this? What has been the past, um, you know, reception, adoption of content like this? Uh, we don't really take much filtration in the making process. So none of this, from from finding a writer to validating your story um, to using data to be able to look at what. The comparative world is done. Yeah. The entire funnel is broken. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Right, and, and that's the funnel yeah. we want to finish. Yeah. yeah, and there's actually a very interesting follow-up question to what you just said, and I'm going to take that up. Uh, it's the question says it's true that AI can help generate high-quality content. However, would you agree that the onus of thinking about good content? ideas, creative concept would still be dependent on an individual, and I think that's exactly the problem that you're solving with. And for critiques, uh, so we want to bring in uh, human intervention at all levels because yeah. eventually, you know, there is nothing better than the uh, creative mind. Yeah. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think you want uh, to get your right and left going all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, then before we end the session, I want to talk about two forms of consumption. We've spoken about active consumption, which is your video on demand and other formats. And the second is passive consumption, um, which has seen a huge rise in, in pandemic. And I'm talking about the audio landscape in India. Um, so, and, and you've spent a big time of, uh, you know, your career pioneering big FM and, you know, working with audio. I really want to understand what do you think of the growing audio landscape in India? Really happy to see what has happened with podcasts and with uh, storytelling on audio. Um, you know, Nilesh Mishra was one of the people that I introduced. Yes. To, and, uh, it, you know, I, I see him on almost every platform today. And it's it's really, I'm really happy to see that that's happened. Anu Kapoor was another. And we've done many such experiments at my time at Big FM. Uh, my wife mm -hmm. makes a lot of podcast shows. And so I kind of look from the sidelines of what she's doing. And, mm -hmm. and I think finally... Uh, yeah. You know, the world has um, has really come to terms with what, you know, good storytelling in an audio format can do, right? And mm -hmm. the other good part, Garima, is that the variety of work that is happening there. So it's both fiction, it's non-fiction, yeah. it's inspirational, it's, uh, you know, creating the theater of mind, it's the quality of uh, narrators that have come to uh, audio, the kind of writing that is happening that is crisp and taut and and every word, um, you know, tends to pass a message rather than rambling along. So, uh, th so, so uh, I think all in all, it's been a big leap in yeah. the quality of content over the last five, seven years. And, and I'm really excited to see what's happened. Yeah. And if, if I'm not wrong, Tarun, you launched 60 stations with Big FM, right? Like that's massive. 
and 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 you know even catering to vernacular which is now the big trend in podcasting obviously following the same trajectory yeah, yeah. Um, we did about 25 languages at that time which is right yes which it is it, it's great i think um I, you know something what you rightly said um there is a need of you know this fine balance of content community and technology and right. it will be very interesting to see how this entire you know technological for your time today tarun i had honestly a great time and i was really looking forward to this conversation likewise um, i heard such great things about you from anil and everybody else so all the very best to well and i all the best wishes to anurudh and his team too thank you so much yes uh, you know i think a big shout out to the entire pepper team for putting up this stellar you know event together for having me um, and for this insightful conversation tarun have a great evening ahead of you and thank you so much for everybody who put in their questions and joining us please uh, do attend the rest of the sessions as well thank you bye bye thanks tarun bye bye